Uh, we start in Gaza, where the number of people fleeing south is surging as Israel intensifies its military operations against Hamas. Israel's military says 50,000 people left the north on Wednesday alone, adding that Gazans believe Hamas has lost control there. Hoping for the protection of the white flag. In the few hours allotted by Israel for safe passage, thousands of people headed south on Gaza's main highway. The Israeli military have been telling people to get out of northern Gaza since the beginning of their air campaign against Hamas. We left the area due to the intense bombardment. We'd been holding on there for 32 days. Yesterday we made the decision to leave because the bombing was very intense. Women and children were terrified and we couldn't bear it any longer. May God help us. But even on the road dedicated for safe passage, the bombardment is not far away. The situation is devastating. And aid organizations such as Doctors Without Borders say nowhere in Gaza is safe. For the Palestinians displaced from the north, this is what awaits them in the south of the Strip. In Khan Yunis, an airstrike brought down a mosque. Several other buildings in the residential area were also destroyed. We were sitting there when all of a sudden an F-16 airstrike landed on a house and blew it up. The entire block, three houses next to each other, without any warning. People were just coming and going, all of them civilians, an old woman, an old man, and there are others still missing under the rubble, still haven't been found yet. For the first responders, giving up hope of finding survivors is not an option. But for many here, there's no hope and no escape. CW's Israel correspondent Rebecca Reyes joins us now from Jerusalem. Rebecca, the Israeli military says thousands are fleeing from northern Gaza because Hamas has lost control there. What's the latest on the offensive? Well, we know that it is intensifying, Gerhard. Uh, we, we know that for a couple of days now, troops have been surrounding Gaza City and they're starting to push in to the, closer to the centre of the city, uh, which they believe is uh, Hamas, you know, head, the headquarters, basically, the stronghold. Uh, we know that all, they've also split the, tri uh, the strip in two, having North Gaza and South Gaza, and that they say that Hamas has lost control in the northern part of the strip, though it is there are still ongoing battles in the whole of the in the northern area. Now we've seen those really dramatic pictures of those people trying to get from the north to the south. Israel has said that it's opened up these corridors. Uh, some 50,000 people, it's thought, were move, moved south yesterday. You saw some of the pictures there in that report, holding white flags and the very few belongings that they have left. Um, whether or not that makes them any safer, of course, remains to be seen. The entire strip is being bombarded, and even areas in the south that Israel have said, you know, people should move to for protection are also being bombed. So there really doesn't appear to be anywhere in the Strip that's safe for civilians. Um, we know that um, all, as well, this, earlier this morning, the Israeli military saying that they've taken control of another Hamas stronghold in the Jabalia refugee camp as well. So that uh, offensive intensifying as they continue their battle to try and rout out Hamas completely. Rebecca, Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has again rejected a ceasefire and also dismissed reports that direct talks are underway on the potential release of hostages in return for a temporary pause in fighting. What more do you know about that? Well, it's really difficult to get accurate and up to the minute, you know, this information on these talks are obviously uh, very secretive um, and Israel isn't in direct contact with Hamas. They're not part of the talks. They're working through intermediaries, particularly Qatar and Egypt, who've been working hard. They've also been heavily involved in the, the hostage releases that we've seen so far. Now, we know that before this offensive began, there were talks to get quite a number of the civilian hostages uh, released, but pretty much the talks broke down when that ground offensive uh, began and now we do believe that these talks are ongoing and they're for around 10 to 15 hostages that could be released if uh, Israel were to agree to a temporary ceasefire to allow for humanitarian aid as you you point out that's something that Israel are not willing to agree to at this stage so the talks uh, we believe are continuing
Thank you very much. Rebecca Richards there reporting from Jerusalem. Well, for more now on developments in Gaza, we can speak to Peter Lerner. He's a spokesperson for the Israel Defense Forces and joins us from Tel Aviv. Welcome to the program. Mr. Lerner, Israeli armed forces are now in the heart of Gaza City, I understand. Tell us what that battle looks like. Uh, Terry, good morning. Indeed, the IDF is continuing to pursue Hamas wherever they are hiding in order to dismantle and destroy their terrorist capabilities and make sure that they never have the power to govern Gaza again as a staging ground against uh, for terrorism against Israel. So what we've seen over the last five or six days is a continuing uh, advance in towards uh, Gaza City, in towards the surrounding areas of the Gaza City, and it is close combat, urban warfare, um, RPGs being fired at our forces, terrorists coming out of tunnels that they pre-prepared and built an extensive network of tunnels. Uh, they're using explosive devices, uh, but I would say that in almost every engagement with our forces, the terrorists are being killed. We will continue to seek out and um, engage them and hunt them down. It sounds like you're up against some pretty fierce resistance there in northern Gaza. Uh, we're hearing reports that the Israeli military is now fully in control there. Uh, are you in control in the north? So I, I'm, not, I'm not aware of any announcement of us saying we're in control. I would say Hamas is definitely not in control. And I think that is uh, what we highlighted yesterday in all of our statements. And this is where we are today. One thing is for certain, Hamas are being pursued and they have no idea what is going on. They're in a state of organizational disarray, communication, communicational disarray, and in disarray between the leaders and their terrorist uh, terrorists that are conducting the attacks. So, of course, as expected, they've been preparing for the war with Israel. And after they launched the war in Israel, so they ran into their defensive positions in the tunnels, and they've been preparing for these days. So, of course, it's going to be fierce, but we will be, be victorious, and we're, we are determined to make sure that they cannot use this, the, the, the Gaza Strip as a staging ground. This is precisely what we're up against. Um, no surprises there from our perspective. Indeed, it's not easy. It's fierce, um, door to door, uh, house to house. And yes, indeed, they are coming out of tunnels and we are pursuing them. We've killed, uh, we've de destroyed over the last uh, few days, 100, over 130 tunnels. We're finding um, terrorists, uh, we've seized 4,000 weapons and munitions. Um, we are finding the rocket launchers, whether they're in the backyards of houses or in kindergartens or schools, wherever they've hidden them. And this is our effort to, to dismantle and destroy Hamas's war effort. Israel has ruled out humanitarian pauses until hostages are freed and Hamas is defeated. Uh, Mr. Lerner, is it not possible to provide aid to civilians and continue your military operations against Hamas? So we are continuing our activities and at the same time we are maintaining at this hour um, for day five, I think, uh, consecutively a, a uh, evacuation corridor from north to south because in the south it is safer in the south there is food being delivered there in the south there is running water in the south there is medication of course it is a war situation so it's not easy for anybody in gaza today uh, in the gaza strip but the south is safer for, from the north and we are up to about 100 aid, aid trucks coming in uh, per day now and that number is expected to con continue to increase um, yes, the humanitarian component is a component of our effort. We are operating in, under the principles of distinction between the civilians and the terrorists, the Hamas uh, terrorists. Um, and that is why we continue to call for the people who have remained in the north over the last four weeks to actually evacuate to the south where it is safer and where Hamas are, are also operating, but their hub of operations, their beating heart of terrorism is in the north, and that's why our focus is is on the north in the north currently. Uh, humanitarian organizations, of course, say that there is a massive lack of uh, of clean water and health care in the south as well. Just to be clear about that, uh, but the question of the hostages, I just wanted to come back to that. So far, the Israeli military has succeeded in in extracting and freeing one hostage. There are well over two hundred there. Can you tell us more about your progress in getting the others out? 
So our updated number of hostages being held by Hamas unlawfully in uh, uh, God knows what condition is 239. Those are 239 people, stories. The youngest of them is 10 months now. When he was abducted, baby Kfir was nine months old. So this is the challenge that we are facing. Of course, I can't, because of the sensitivity of the issue, I can't elaborate much on the issue of hostages and other than that they need to be brought home. We've demanded that the International Committee of the Red Cross have access to assess their well-being. Uh, but Hamas are ultimately responsible for their well-being. We are utilizing all of the operational tools that we have, and it is a national priority and a priority of this war. Peter Lana from the Israel Defense Forces, thank you very much for talking with us. Good day, Terry. Well, the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres has once again condemned the Hamas attack on Israel last month that left 1,400 people dead. He's also criticized the high number of civilian casualties that the Israeli army offensive is causing in Gaza. The Hamas-run health ministry says that more than 10,500 people, many of them children, have been killed by Israeli strikes. There are violations by Hamas when they have human uh, shields. But uh, when one looks at the number of civilians that were killed with the military operations, there is something that is clearly wrong. The highest number of killing of children by any of the actors in all the conflicts that uh, we witness is the maximum in the hundreds. We have, in a few days in Gaza, thousands and thousands of children killed. And we come back to the situation in Gaza now, where fears are growing at the deteriorating conditions. The World Health Organization has warned that disrupted healthcare facilities, poor water supplies and sanitation have created fertile conditions for the rapid spreading of infectious diseases. Surrounded by rotting waste and stagnant water, and with no access to clean facilities, Thousands of Gazans who have fled their homes now live in this camp operated by the United Nations Agency for Palestinians, UNRWA, in the southern city of Khan Yunus. Facing new threats to their health. There are no proper bathrooms. The situation is horrific. The health conditions are really bad, a catastrophe. The garbage and the diseases are affecting the children. Diseases are reportedly spreading quickly in Gaza. The World Health Organization says cases of chickenpox, scabies, diarrhea and respiratory infections are rapidly increasing, especially among young children. And the situation is getting worse as the number of people seeking shelter continues to rise. In the Khan Yunus training center, where 22,000 displaced men, women, and children are sought shelter, the space per person is less, than, is less than two square meters, and there's one toilet for 600 people. Um, our colleagues at UNRWA said that the worsening sanitary conditions, along with the lack of privacy and space, pose great risks to the health and safety of those sheltering there. The hospitals still in operation in Gaza are already stretched to capacity. And these new outbreaks of infection and disease are adding more pressure, with vaccines and treatments in ever-shortening supply. Earlier, I spoke with Toby Fricker from the UN Children's Relief Agency, UNICEF. I started by asking him how the lack of water, sanitation and health care in Gaza is impacting children there. Yeah, you're right. I mean, the um, you know, if you surviving the hostilities is one thing, but also then now, you know, the massive concern over that lack of access to safe water, uh, sanitation, uh, hygiene uh, is absolutely critical now. Uh, what we've seen is, of course, with these you know, 1.5 million, probably more now, people displaced around the Gaza Strip, is people living in even more densely populated areas than they were before. 
Um, and then, of course, you have an increased risk of the outbreak of, of diseases. Um, and at the same time, that access to safe water uh, is really so hard. People are getting you know, three litres per day maximum, and, and often that is contaminated water that's not clean. Now, UNICEF, we have a desalination plant that we are be able to provide some safe water, but it's nowhere near enough. It's still functioning, but at, at minimal capacity. So this is a huge concern. You've seen... Uh, the UN talking about you know outbreaks of, of diarrhea. We've spoken to to colleagues and staff who have been talking about you know increasing outbreaks of, of diarrhea, dehydration, uh, and other issues. And and this is obviously a massive concern in terms of that it could get worse, not better. And that's why it's so important that we need to get life saving supplies in as, as quickly as possible to improve the conditions, particularly in these very densely populated shelters. Given the conditions in Gaza, what, if anything, Toby, is your organization and others like it able to do there to protect and help the children? Yeah, I mean, well, firstly, let me say, obviously, it's extremely difficult, extremely dangerous. Uh, the UN Palestine Refugee Agency have, have now lost well, over 90 uh, staff members who have been killed. Uh, UNICEF staff members have had families killed, and of course, they're trying to protect their own children at the same time. But we are still operating uh, inside the Gaza Strip. We're trying to do whatever we can. It's not enough, but we're trying to. So aid is coming in slowly. There's a trickle rather than a flow, which is what we need urgently. And we've been moving supplies, so medical equipment, uh, water supplies, to shelters, to hospitals. Just the other day, there was a delivery by the UN uh, to a hospital in Gaza City. Um, so there, there is some supplies moving around, and we are providing some support to children in shelters, such as, you know, not just recreation activities, to provide a little bit of childhood back uh, to children, give them an hour or so to forget about all the horrors ar around them. So there are things happening, and we're trying to do whatever we can and to scale that up massively, given the immense needs that are on the ground.